welcome to the next lecture series in electric power system here we are going to discuss the load or power flow analysis the lecture will be from lecture number 33 to lecture number 37 let us look into the contents so lecture number 33 will be on discussion of introduction to load or power flow analysis what is the importance of load flow analysis what is the difference between a circuit analysis versus load flow analysis then lecture number 34 we will go for bus classification 35 we will discuss the power flow problem with preparation of data for power flow problem and 36 we are going to discuss the gauss seidel method and finally in 37 we are going to discuss the newton raphson method so gauss seidel and newton raphson method two methods we are going to discuss how to solve the load and power flow problem in this lecture lecture number 33 we are going to give an introduction of the load flow problem and compare the difference of load flow with circuit analysis so let us see the introduction so generally in power system load flow whose other name is power flow is used for obtaining the steady state solution of the electrical network so generally we do load flow or power flow as the name indicates so it is bas basically to obtain the steady state solution of the electrical network now three major problems are encountered in the symmetrical steady state in the hierarchy order as first the load flow problem second the optimal load scheduling problem and third the system control problem so these three problems are in order of hierarchical problem for a symmetrical steady state so generally we are trying to obtain the result for a steady state solution so we will focus on the load flow problem so power flow studies are of great importance in planning operation maintenance and control so whenever some planning is required or operation maintenance and control is required we generally do power flow studies now in the planning stage we determine when the specific power system elements become underloaded or overloaded now in the operation stage we ensure that each generator runs at their maximum operating point now in future expansion of the power system we discuss whether whether there is a probability how to future expanded the system in a wise manner to have a major best operation and major investment of the existing or future system so we have seen that we generally use the load flow or the power flow problem to obtain the steady state solution and the best way to get importance is both in the planning stage and the operation stage and also for the future expansion so load flow studies power flow from sending end to the receiving end through a transmission line this we have seen uh, throughout in our power system syllabus that how the power will flow from the sending end to the receiving end the equation in terms of power are known as power flow equation so that is the reason the load flow problems are known as power flow problem because all the equations will be in terms of the power these power flow equations are normally non linear in nature and must be solved by some iterative techniques since the equations are non linear we have to pertain to the iterative techniques of solving the equations so load flow studies are performed to determine the voltage drop on each feeder second the voltage magnitude and phase angle at each bus so the real and reactive power flowing in all branches so these studies load flow studies are used to determine these quantities and finally the total power loss in the system as well as power losses in each branch then the load flow studies are done before transient stability and contingency studies so generally first we will do the load flow studies before any transient happen so basically these load flow studies are only for to obtain the steady state solution sometimes a load flow study shows an overloaded connections on transformer or transformer then preventive action are taken in the real network to stop this situation in this case a large number of load flow analysis is carried out and that is known as the contingency study simulation software we can use etap sim ipca 
and power world are often used for these studies. Generally, load flow problems are quite complex and bigger problem. So we have to use some software to solve the load flow problems. So these are the commonly used uh, software that can be used in the industries to solve the load flow problem. The principal information obtained from the power flow study. What are the principal information obtained? What are the magnitude and phase angle of the voltage at each bus and the real and reactive power flowing in each line? So these two information are the principal information that we are obtaining from the power flow study. What is the magnitude and phase angle of the voltage at each bus and what is the real and the reactive power flowing in each line? So importance of load flow analysis. So we investigate following features of a power system network. Flow of megawatt that is the real power and MVR that is the reactive power in the branches of the network. We find the bus bar or the node voltage. Effect of rearranging the circuit and incorporating new circuit on the system loading. Effect of temporary loss of generation and transmission circuit on system loading mainly for the security studies. Effect of injecting in phase and quadrature boost voltage on the system loading. Optimum system running conditions and load distribution. Minimizing the system losses. Optimum rating and tap range of transformers. Improvement from change of conductor size and system voltage. So these all important concepts in power system which are required when to flow a power system network. So in a power system network, there will be several features that will be involved to maintain a load flow analysis. So what is the difference between circuit analysis and load flow analysis? So load flow analysis is similarly to the traditional circuit analysis with a key difference. So what is the difference that we are seeing? First, let us see what is a circuit analysis. So in circuit analysis, given all value of impedances in the circuit and parameters of voltage and current, all nodal voltage and branch current can be calculated directly. We know that in circuit analysis, the impedances will be given, the voltage and current will be given and we are told to determine the nodal voltage and branch current. And these relationship between the nodal voltage and current is basically linear in nature which is given by V equal to I into Z that is your Ohm's law. So Ohm's law is basically linear in nature. Now let us see the load flow analysis. So in the load flow analysis the loads and sources are defined in terms of power and not impedances. We have seen that here impedance will be given for circuit analysis but in load flow analysis we will be given the power instead of impedance. Now all power network branches, transformers or overhead and underground circuits circuit are defined in terms of the impedances. So generally the components of the power system that we have seen transformer, overhead and underground circuits they will be defined in terms of impedance. Now the relationship between voltage, power and impedance is non-linear. We have seen that in the circuit analysis problem, the relationship is linear in nature, but in load flow analysis problem, the relationship is non-linear and appropriate method for solving the non-linear circuit need to be used. So we have to solve the non-linear problem in case of load flow analysis. Now what are the required steps for the load flow studies? First step is representation of the system by single line diagram which we have already studied. Now determining the impedance diagram using the information in single line diagram. So first you create the single line diagram then you create the impedance diagram. This we have already done. Now formulation of network equations then solutions of network equation. So these are the steps by which we will form a load flow problem. Thank you.